Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this uh, services committee meeting for the Macclesfield Town Council on the 27th of February, starting now at 7 o'clock. So, as I say, welcome everybody. Do we have any apologies for absence, Councillor Buddock? Thank you. And uh, do we have any declarations of interest? No. Um, public questions, do we have anyone attending from the public? No. no one has come forward for that, okay. So we then move to item three, minutes of the services committee meeting held on the 21st of November 2022. Do I have a proposal for those minutes? Thank you, Councillor Livingston. And a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Bankway. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Two abstentions, thank you. Um, matters arising from the minutes. Are there any matters arising? No. Okay, so we'll move on from that. And we've now got to item five. Um, community. Um, Helena, do you want to do this one? Um, so we're currently with a recruitment campaign for volunteers. So we have a, a small team of volunteers, which is fantastic and have been helping out at recent events, but we're looking to expand on that team. So we've been doing a few things to try and um, promote that. So myself and the comms officer are working on a campaign to, to recruit more volunteers. We've been on the radio talking about it and we're going to hold our first volunteer thank you event in March with the Mayor so that's going to be just a nice opportunity for us to say thank you for all their hard work. Grant applications are steady but also interestingly we've had an increase in the amount of micro grant applications. We've had another one today so the word is getting out about the lower level grant funding that we don't necessarily need to be a registered charity or a constituency group. Uh, just remind us what value is that micro grant? It's up to a hundred pounds. Yeah. Yes, it's low level. Yeah. It's designed to start projects off. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and then we come to the CBS update 5.2. Um, I, I hope everyone's uh, had a chance to read through this. Um, we're talking of volunteers, and I do feel that. A lot of the work that CBS do is to encourage volunteers. Volunteers are the backbone, as we know, of our local community, of all the different organisations and charities. And um, we get a lot of help from CBS and they really do support um, the organisations and, and people in the community. So um, it's a great report and we always get such a good report from them. Um, any, any comments, any questions on it? No? Okay, so um, we'll move on from that then. Thank you. So the uh, next item is... Um, sorry, excuse me a moment. Five. Seems to have lost my place here. There we are. <laughs> Um, six, local service delivery, um, events update. Um, just one update on this. So, Park Fit continues to be popular. So, we're planning to move back outdoors after Easter um, into the park. Stepping to Christmas seems like a long time ago now, but it was a really popular event and there were new aspects this year. So, councillors all got involved in the living window, which was really popular. Um, we had loads of really lovely feedback about that. Um, Macclesfield Youth Brass Band played the carols around the tree, the mayor gave a speech to the crowd. It was, it was just a lovely day, a lovely start to Christmas, which led on to the Tree of Light event. It's fairly cold this year, so it moved indoors to St Michael's. But again, beautiful event, really well received by the public. Um, so the late night shopping event um, was a success. Um, it was popular. 
but we are having conversations now just looking at how we can adapt it into the future and respond to how the event has evolved. So we're starting to think about maybe making it more of a Christmas drink type of event rather than focusing on the shopping. So that, that aspect will still be there, but focusing more on the drink, the social side of it, because PT in the marketplace was really popular. And if you came to the event, it was just a lovely, warm atmosphere. Um, so we're trying to maximise on that, really. I was just saying that because Rachel, our events officer, is on holiday, but she was sort of thinking that we offer a lot of events for families and that this might be a, like an adult, an adult event where you could come after work and have drinks, maybe have um, Christmas themed food, you know, like a Christmas dinner in a Yorkshire pudding if anybody could offer that locally or anything, just to make it more of a, an, an event. For, for maybe adults, because it goes on quite late when the children won't be there and obviously the shops we would still encourage them to be open, but it's just the marketing of it, whether late night shopping bringing people in because um, you know the the people you know not all the shops open and then mm -hmm. but having this lovely experience might be, you know, sort of a nice adult event. So it, it you know it, it depends what councillors think or what they you know, and um, because I know Fiona, you attended it. Sorry, Councillor Wilson attended it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And yeah. um, you know, it felt um, well, like you, you know, you could tell us what you thought. Do you think? Well, I do think that we do a lot of things for families, and that was very much appreciated, particularly the free events that we do. Certainly, as mayor, we had a lot of positive feedback about that because th th things are tight at the moment, and certainly in in my ward uh, where I have the display in the local. Co-ops who are very helpful about displaying these sort of things, that they go down very well. Um, but I think that um, having an event that's focused on on adults is actually a really nice thing to do. And there was two food provisions on the night, and there was one. There was the the the, the box bar, wasn't the horse box bar. But I think if we had a little bit more food provision, that would be quite useful. Yeah, yeah. Just to support Council Wilson, I think that as given that. Great to be, you know, working with the town council 
um, being involved with the workshops that they, they did to create the lanterns. And they are very, very supportive of what the town council is doing and want to be involved as much as possible uh, with the events because they appreciate how, how much um, the people in the town like it and, and how it, it increases the vibrancy of the town. And I think everything we can do about events and promoting events and collaborating with the different groups in the town is all to the, the good, really. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Dawson. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. This was an amazing event. Mm. Um, when I first heard about it, I was thinking, what's it going to be like? But the concept of it, you know, to sort of banish the winter and do something as, it, as, it, as darkness is falling, was just so atmospheric. Mm. And um, there was, all ages were represented there. And uh, it was just a wonderment every few minutes, you know, the, all the different, the lobster and the, my favourite were the angels on stilts, I have to say. They, they, were, they were phenomenal. But the, the friendship that was there amongst people, everyone was chatting to each other. Um, and I, I like these events we organise where you can go with your family beforehand and you can make something, whether it's a noise maker or whether it's a lantern. And I had the most ace lantern that, uh, that Rachel made for me. It, it's still in my house, actually, on my, in, in my lounge. I should probably bring it back to the town hall, but it's really amazing. And I carried it round all evening because I went out later on with, with my, with my um, cousin and his granddaughter who'd come to see the football. And I was walking around town with it later on. And, People were asking me what it, you know, and they're saying what happened, and they were looking at it, and it was just a real topic of conversation, and it was such a quirky thing, yet it really, really worked. Um, I just thought it was absolutely fantastic. I have to say that for me at the moment, it actually really raised my spirits. I went home feeling quite cheerful, and it had been a really lovely evening, and I, I felt very uplifted by the whole event, which at the moment with the stuff that I'm sort of sorting out is, is actually it cheered me up. I'd, I'd like to, to echo what um, Councillor Rawson said. I, I, every single person I saw as we entered the um, the town square and we saw the lobster a la carte, because it was <laughs> in a car, um, I had a, a, a smile on the face. It was absolutely hilarious. It was, there were children getting bounced by the tail, getting the cover with the, the claws, and um, <clears throat> they were sort of social media responses like it, it's a bit of a um, it's a bit like a truth market really they do these quirky things and and it attracts people to the town but also to come out on a miserable dark night and then come away with a <coughs> smile on your face it, to me it's just it's all about well-being and, and good mental health so yeah well done you certainly put a smile on my face uh, yeah, I think, uh, just to echo uh, comments that have been made, um, I, I wasn't able to attend the, the wanton baking because I was at work on the weekend before, um, but the family made a uh, lantern for me. Such a simple concept of a, a paper bag uh, and a, a lantern. But I think what struck it to myself as we were walking up um, Mill Street is people were, the, the, the pedestrians, the, the people in the town were actually stopping to see what was going on. Mm. It was almost as if we were doing the members break back up to the town, the town hall. Mm. And again, those that weren't actually involved that, that took the time to, to see what was going on and the potential for, for, for next year. So yeah, absolutely thrilled by, by what I see. You know, nice, sort of simple evenings, uh, good work with the town council. And, and I just say, just for myself and I think from all the councillors, just to say, you know, thank you so much for what the team are doing with events and supporting the local charities and everything really. I do I do believe that the, the town council is doing a tremendous job and it's thank you to the staff at the town hall particularly. So please pass that on to the members of staff who are producing. And that thank you to such a good account hall statement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Now a mutual. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So up and coming events. Yes. Yeah, so um, got some exciting events coming up. Got an Easter event on the eighth of April. 
So it'll be a town-wide event. So we're, we're working together with St. Michael's and Christchurch Arts Base, yeah? <laughs> so Post um, mm-hmm. So that'll be another, another excellent family event for people to get involved with. There's going to be a trailer around the town centre as well. Um, and then we've got the King's Coronation Town Centre Tea Party. It's going to be hosted by the Mayor. And in addition to the main party that we're going to be hosting on the 8th of May, which is a Monday, there are going to be parties throughout the weekend across the town. So in a similar way to the that we held the Jubilee parties, it's going to be like that. So we've got quite a few community groups that are signing up to take part in that. And um, we're working through the commissions with them like we've done at the moment. So would they be generally on the Saturday the 6th and Sunday the 7th, are there? Yes, That's generally, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think there's one other that's taking part on the 8th, yeah. um, which is Christchurch, I think. So Green, Greenside as well. So right, yeah. 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 So I know Rachel's just in the process of finalising commissions and dates, but generally they'll across the whole weekend. So there'll be something for people to do on the Saturday, Sunday and the Monday. So it's really a matter of what's this space, look out yeah. for the leaflets, the posters, yeah. the social media for those who get their information that way. Yeah. And then the armed forces day. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so the details are yet to be 100% confirmed for this, but there is going to be a celebration in the marketplace. There's going to be food, music, military vehicles. The events officers have been working quite closely with Cheshire East Council um, on, on this event, so it's going to be a bit of a combined effort. It's going to be a fantastic day for, for, all, for all the community. Yeah, look forward to that because we, it's been a while, I think, since we've had that. And uh, I mean, yeah, is it the, the, the Pipers, Highland, Highland Band? I think come, come, we get some. I think sure we get a gang of fellas in kilts <laughs> <laughs> playing the bagpipes or something. Just something strikes me. Uh, but it's always a really great event. Yes. Just, just a, um, so I have uh, attended a few of the Macclesfield um, veterans on forces breakfast meetings. Um, and I think around Forces Day last year, we were a bit disappointed that nothing was going on in Macclesfield. They were obviously informed that there were things going on in Crewe. Um, so we've, we've gone back to, as a, a, a group of people <coughs> to Cheshire East Council and they, you know, they're working together with Cheshire East Council. It's, it's nice that they have our Forces Day recognising that as um, just with going to the, the Breakfast Club and, and the veterans that, yeah. that never were in that. So have you got some inside knowledge here, Councillor no. Wilcox, on what no. will be? No. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately. I thought you might. No. Okay, but it will be a good event. I know yeah. from, from memory, you know, what we've had in the past has been excellent events. Mm. So, uh, so we look forward to that. Okay, thank you, Harry. Um, got some other... Yeah, so we've got um, some forthcoming events. These really are just save the day. So we've got the bikes on, which we start promoting this week, which is on the 20th of May. Party in the Fuse, which is going to be a really exciting festival, 27th and 28th of May. So tickets are available for that. That's at Christchurch. Yes, yeah, at Christchurch. And I think tickets are selling quite fast from what I saw earlier. Yeah. Barnaby Festival, 16th to the 18th of June. Mac Powell Comic Art Festival, we're supporting that again, working with Mark Jackson on that one, that's the 2nd of July, and Mac Pride on the 15th of July. Just a quick question, please. Yeah. Is it Mac Powell on a Sunday this year, the same day as the Armed Forces Day? But it's normally on a Saturday. It's just notice that. Yeah, that's not that's an error. Councillor Wilson, sorry if I may interrupt. It is the 1st and the 2nd of July. The main event is on the 1st of July okay. in the Town Hall, which I think you've attended before. Yeah. And then the 2nd of July, there'll be workshops around town. Brilliant, thank you. Because it would be a shame to have two things clashing on the one day. Brilliant, thank you very much. So, Mac Powell's on the 1st. On the 2nd. On the 2nd. The main event is on the 1st, yeah, in the Town Hall. Pride is the 15th. Pride is the 15th of July. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so we move on to 6.2, which is the floral displays. And um, as you'll see from the report, um, ANSA now have the contract for the floral displays uh, around the town. And uh, we are um, 
entering Britain in bloom again this year. Uh, but we, we won gold, as you know, last year. So where do we go from there? <laughs> um, well, the way we go now is to extend it out and get more people involved to enter their premises. So we've been talking with Cheshire Eastern Hope to get one of the parks entered from, uh, from Cheshire East. It's not confirmed yet, and we haven't got the official okay yet, but uh, we're hoping one of the parks will be entered into the Britain in Bloom. And we're looking at um, pubs and retail shops because we've found that other towns uh, around the area, um, the way they extend the bloom is to encourage accommodation, pubs, and retail shops to get involved in their own right. Um, obviously, we will be helping with that, and we do have a small budget to assist with entry fees. So anyone who is interested can approach us and we can get them involved. And they'll be sort of under our umbrella as Macclesfield Britain in Bloom, but they can win an award in their own right, which they can then display in their premises. Uh, so we're hoping this will extend it a lot, a lot further and encourage people to be more involved. So we're, yeah, we're hoping that will take off. <coughs> So, um, public toilets, um, <laughs> this, this is your subject. <laughs> so, um, very, very happily and pleasingly, we have announced that we'll be working with Cheshire East <coughs> to provide the public toilets in the indoor market. Um, and I suppose, just, just so anybody watching understands that um, this solution really is, is, is the best one because it helps the indoor market, which we're trying to help with footfall, and um, it is um, because it's part of Cheshire East, there's less maintenance for the town council. I know previous plans were to build toilets down on Exchange Street, but we got, I think we got to the point where we didn't know who owned the subsoil, mm -hmm. and it was legally quite difficult, and it was very, very slow. So the town centre recovery working group looked at other options. And so it's just, you know, we've had very positive that people are interested and I suppose the, 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 one of the really best things about it is they'll have a full changing places toilet, which will be the, you know, Macclesfield Town Centre does not have one, so that, that's, you know, a really great step forward. So in summer, the, uh, the work will commence. So it's great news for everybody because uh, as councillors, we've all, I'm sure, our mailbox has been full of messages from residents um, and particularly once we realised that Mark and Spencer's was leaving the town um, we knew it was going to become a, a really difficult uh, problem. Yes, Councillor Wilson. Uh, yes, thank you Chair. Um, the, the, the lack of public toilets in the town centre has been one of the things that gets read and read in these now. It's one of those regular things that comes up with people and they've been talking a lot to people about this great news of, of ourselves and Cheshire East Council working together um, to deliver something that is much needed in Macclesfield. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, you know what's basically happened is that the Macclesfield Town Council has the funding but no land, mm -hmm. and the Cheshire East Council has the land and has the reverse the, the, the you know, re the funding pressure, shall we say? Um, and I think that uh, it, it's gone down very, very well indeed. People realise that we you know put a lot of time and effort into getting it sorted, and um, you know there's a great deal of, uh, of excitement that we've. we've We've cracked this issue, and I'm delighted because when I first came on the council, we thought it was going to be fairly straightforward. Um, but then it turns out there's all sorts of legal complications, and uh, you know I think the, the fact we walked away from that and went to look at a different solution is a credit to us uh, for doing that. And I also think as well is that the town centre recovery working group that we've all participated in and supporting the the indoor market it just goes to show how it, how important those types of groups are that you know, that we all come together wanting the best for our town and we, we, we are therefore able to deliver something really important. I think this is a fantastic project and I'm very pleased it's come to fruition. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm so pleased that this is um, this has really happened now and also that it's um, a change in place for adults as well because you know everyone has somebody in their family with a hidden disability or 
of work with children with special needs and disability users. I don't know what one of those places looks like. If, I wondered if the town clerk could describe a change in place for those who don't know. Yeah, so it has to fit certain requirements to be called a change in place toilet and it basically, it has a hoist. So it has a hoist and then you, you have to be in there with someone else and then you can push them round so they can fit into the toilet. And it also has a changing, you know, like the baby changing mats that come out the wall, but it would be for an adult as well. So it, it makes a huge difference because do you remember that lady who came over a year ago um, and her son, there wasn't one here? And that was, you know, she was really emotive and, you know, having to change him on the floor of the toilet. So it's just brilliant that we've, you know, been able to work towards this and get this. And also get the other toilets in as well. Mm. So it makes sense to do it all at the same time. Mm. Brilliant. And these things don't come cheap, so I'm really pleased that we gave off that money for it. Thank you. Item 6.4. Questions, Helen, yeah. Um, so, yeah, as it says in the report, one of the trees has sadly died at Park Green, so the lights had to be removed. That has that work has taken place now. So the next step um, we need to have a walk around that area with tiling to look in at the trees to see which other alternative trees the lights can go on, and they'll be put back up. Yeah. Okay. Um, 6.5 is the Tumcliffe Trail. Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, myself and Councillor Janet Jackson, we, we walked around the proposed route and we decided to just take a step back because it's been going on quite some time, the project, and to look at what, do, we have, do we have permission to use these, these paintings or copies of these paintings for the trail. So we've been in touch with the director of the museums and we're going to have a meeting, the three of us, to discuss how we can take it forward, if this is the best way to take it forward, if there are alternatives, and how we can work together. I know the director is quite keen that we work with other groups as well, and so we're doing it as a collective rather than just on our own. It's quite a difficult project, but yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, just for information for everyone, it was this has been a project that was started a number of years ago now. Um, and um, at the time, you know, it seemed what a great idea um, to have some images of the Tunnicliffe paintings around the town. And um, I mean, this is going back to the previous council. Um, uh, and little did we realise just what mm. difficulties there would be. Mm. Uh, mainly just getting, trying to get permissions for the different locations. Uh, finding out who the landlords were and then to try and get the permission and over the years landlords have changed occupants of the buildings have changed so it's it, it's not been an easy matter so we are going to be reassessing it and we'll just see um, what can be done it's a shame because I don't I would, you know I would hope we could get uh, this trail in place, but um, you know we'll we'll have to see. There are other options, and I know that Cheshire East, with their murals that they've been uh, encouraging with with those projects, uh, they've included Tunnicliffe in those. So we have got um, a painting at the station, and I believe it could be a Tunnicliffe theme for the gable end at Snow Goose as well, and that's due to start this week, I think. It has started, I yeah, know what has today, started we're, we're today, I think it. it was, yeah, yeah. I know, I know um, the lady who manages that, that venue, so, and she had said it was, it was going to start today. Today, start today. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll just have a meeting and, and see what, how we can move it along. Hopefully we can do something like that. Okay, so um, Barnaby. So um, one of the things that uh, councillors have talked about was wanting a, a real life Barnaby parade this year. And so we've been working with Barnaby and with Art Space, and um, a, a plan has been put forward, which is 6,500 for Barnaby and 4,000 for Art Space. Both are um, happy for this and happy to work together. 
I think art space is particularly thrilled um, to be part of it. And so, um, yeah, that, that's the, basically the decision really to approve the, the funding proposals for, for the parade. It's for one year only and we'll see how, the, how it goes mm -hmm. and then we'll you know, decide for next year. So, do I have a proposer for the, uh, for the amount, 6,500 for Barnaby and 4,000 for art space? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Livingston. We take them as the two together, we're happy with that. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second year on that one? Thank you, yeah. Councillor Bennett Wright. Uh, is there any debate at all? Any questions? Or we'll move straight to the vote then. All those in favour, please show. Oh, I was just going to say, um, everyone I've spoken to who actually will for Barnaby and be taking place again because, it, again, it's one of those quirky things about Macclesfield. So, um, you know, we've had people with party things, it's not necessarily herring lobsters, but <laughs> maybe the seals will be, the Macclesfield seals swimming group will be bringing their big sea legs again, so that'll be a joy. Something else to bring a smile to people's faces. Yeah. Just one other quick technical point. It might be worth voting on them separately, but the total amount's more than ten thousand pounds. Yes. And ten thousand pounds is this committee's limit. So perhaps we should deal with them one by one rather than together. That's very true. Did my deputy chair find them? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Right. I, 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 I'm certain we're going to be agreed, but we'll have to move on to somebody making their comment that we have. Um, not attended to our governance regulations. So yeah. Could I not propose we do the vote separately, please? Yes, yeah. yes, well, that, that's fine. I did, I had suggested the opportunity, so, um, yeah. Well, I'm sorry to be late to the party. I had said we'd be able to take them separately. Not, I mean, not for, yeah. not for the reason well, you... Well, I didn't hear that, sorry. Not for the reason you suggested it, mm. uh, Councillor Wilson, just because of ensuring that people were happy with both aspects. That was what I was more concerned about, actually. Um, so, right, so we will take them separately. I don't think we need a vote on that. Um, so, um, if, if I can have a proposer for the Barnaby amount. Thank you, Councillor Livingstone. A seconder. Thank you, Councillor Bennett Way. So, this vote is for £6,500 for Barnaby. All those in favour, please show. Thank you unanimous and then do i have a proposer for four thousand pounds for art space thank you yeah councillor livingston seconder thank you councillor bennett Wait. so all those in favor of the four thousand thank you that's unanimous thank you very much everyone right uh, so item seven leisure and outdoor activities Parks and play areas. Still work? Yeah, so Windmill Park, we are still trying to get um, somebody to do up the, I get, I always get this wrong, it's a bike, it's a BMX track, isn't it? It's not a skate, well, it's BMX. Mm -hmm. It's gone out for tender twice with ANZA, with the Town Council having 26,500 in funding to do it. They have had I think we've had a couple of applications and I think it's by the end of this week they will let us know if they've passed the due diligence etc and let us have a look at the tender so fingers crossed that will that will yeah. take place and happen and then the um other one is the western which is councillor Hutchison and councillor Harewood Patch they have picked a local artist to paint up the skate park an artist called Dick Vincent and they will be getting some goalposts. They've used their award budget for, for goalposts on there. So by the summer, hopefully that will be completely finished, the park. Yes, thanks. On the, on the Windmill Park, um, this is um, part that the town council's invested some considerable funds in, in, in terms of it being on the border between South Ward and uh, East Ward. Uh, myself and my colleague, Cheshire East Councillor Puddicum, recently attended a planning application discussion for the Albion Mill on London Road and uh, there were some Section 106 funds being allocated to a park in the area 
um, and it was allocated for um, play equipment in the park and I was able to advise the committee that in fact we just spent a lot of money. We gave a chance to advertise the work that the town council had done, but I specifically asked that funding could go towards the BMX track as part of the section 106 money. It'll go a bit late, but at least it's worth earmarking it, so it doesn't go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Stage planning application is in, we are looking back, even back to Cheshire's Council and all the application. There is a fundraising event on Thursday night for local businesses to seek their contributions uh, towards fundraising for the pavilion. Um, as we know, construction prices linked to the economy are rapidly rising. We would hope they will settle back by the end of the year. But one of the things for the Council to consider is really Um, they certainly do get across all the boards. Um, 
an audit, um, <clears throat> as it says, work requests through the office, and that quite often is through uh, councillors requesting work, and then their own jobs and completed schedules. So they have, um, you know, various uh, other works, well, a lot of other works, which they, they're always very proactive. That's what I like to see about the rangers. Very proactive, always looking for where there, there is work required. And, um, well, you know, I'm very proud of the work they do. And uh, again, you know, thank you to the rangers. And please pass that on, I'm sure, from all the councillors here. Uh, the work they do is very much appreciated. And the quick response that we get when something is raised with them. So thank you for that. Then um, we have, oh, the old chestnut, sorry, shouldn't call it that, but Middlewood Way Lighting. Saga of. Who would like to speak? Do you want to speak on it? What the other so continuous chair, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just when you think you've got it sorted, it's not <laughs> sorted. Um, so, um, as the report says, myself and Tam Clark met with the new um, head of highways, Mike Burnett, um, and uh, the advice price is now £115,000, which is significantly higher than, than it was when we started this in 1853. Um, but basically, um, the, there's been some developments that we're trying to get to the bottom of. Uh, our original wish was to relight like the whole of Middlewood Way, but of course half of it's been done. The bit that runs from Tesco's all the way through to the roundabout um, on Titherington Way, that has been redone with lights that brighten as you approach. Very impressive. But I've been trying to find out why and how that happened, uh, which, which is great news. But um, Mike did say he was going to come back to us about that, and he did say he was going to try and find some Section 106 money, so I guess I'm going to say my usual. That's Tracy's response. Yes, yeah, I am Tracy now. Mm. It does, it's funny how it costs more mm. to have less now than we wanted in the first place. Yeah, yeah. that's not down to COVID or inflation, <laughs> that's just down to, mm. yeah. Mm. yeah. Yes, Councillor Wilcox. Uh, just a, a question, uh, Councillor Wilson. Has there been any um, explanation as to the increase of Price, is it uh, line, street lines? Is it um, what, what, any ideas? Yes, I mean the, the original plans that we had in place was that we wanted to use solar lighting. The solar lighting is, is powered by the sun. Okay, green. um, it's greener and more efficient, and it's much cheaper. And if you remember, we had a, a initial plan in place for forty thousand pounds for sixty lanterns that would have relighted the Middlewood Way from the Wooden Bridge. Um, over the Silk Road, all the way back up to um, Tesco's. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were, we had actually, if you remember, full council agreed that cost and we ordered the lights. And then we were told that the lights didn't meet the requirements for lighting and some British standards mm -hmm. were mentioned that myself and Campbell Livingston had never heard of. <laughs> uh, and in fact, well, you know, it was all a bit unsatisfactory, yeah. to, have, to be honest about it. Um, so then it was sent back, and this is actually for, you know, electric lights. There's actually then a cost in, mm. in paying for it going forward. And um, the, the 115,000 will be some element of inflation, but it's because it's a completely different source of lighting that we'd originally chosen. Um, so, I mean, the good news is that someone's paid to do half the middle of way. I personally think it's probably something to do with some building, you know, some other development work, but I'm not mentioning anything about that because I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. But Mike Barnett did say he would come back to us about that, mm. so we could perhaps chase him on that as well. Mm. But uh, we'll have to see if it does happen. Won't it be my lifetime now? I'm not sure. <laughs> but we're going to keep on. I shall, I shall bequeath this in my will to the council. <laughs> 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 I mean, I thought the Tunny Cliff Trail was that. You know, know. <laughs> this would be my Tunny Cliff Trail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 8.4, the uh, 01625 gallery. Um, yes, so the first exhibition has now taken place. Um, it was created by local artist Patty Callahan, who worked at Art Space and is producing some fantastic artwork. 
So that launch will be in November, and we're coming up to our next exhibition now in March, which is Working with Art Space, and this one is very much a community ex exhibition, so there's project workshops um, for children and families, and anybody who wants to go along and create some artwork for these phone boxes, but it's going to be brightly coloured, big, sort of stationary. I know it sounds, it's, it's one of those massive fields, crazy things again. Yeah. <laughs> they sent me a picture the day of a giant print stick that they're putting in there. It, it looks, it looks fantastic. So I think this one's going to be really fun and be a mini me spoon yeah. self portrait yeah. yeah. as well. Yeah. Sounds, <laughs> yeah, sounds really good. You can see me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Councillor Livingston. I, I think to you, I think this is fantastic. Given the first conversation, let's be cool. Boxes, so yeah, yeah. No terms in an art gallery, so it is costly and it's Ooh. very much in keeping with the theme of the town. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I love the idea, just make it as bright as you possibly can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then we've got Minimac with IDST in yeah. May through, through to August, haven't we? Yeah, so that'll be the, the one that follows <coughs> the next that will also be the one that can be factoring into Ricky and Bruce as that as well. Yes. So. Yeah, so we'll have the hanging baskets on that one. Yeah. With the written in blue. Yeah. But it's a great idea. Mm. It's a good idea. Yeah, so yeah, good luck to them and yeah, well done. Um right, community enforcement. So um we've had our new CEO, which is Compute Community Enforcement Officer. Um Mark has started. He um is attending uh, our internal team meetings on a Thursday, which is great, have that link with him. Um, and he's out and about. He's, um, he, if, if there is prolonged areas of issue, he can create a patrol plan. So he's done one for Christchurch and he's done one for Sidlington. And um, he's quite open to, to speaking to councillors and working with them. So if anybody wants to ask him for advice, etc. Um, you know, he's a, a friendly guy, he's keen to get some catches, if you like. And I think it's just worth, if anybody is watching, to remember that he can issue instant fines. And what we're finding is, is most of it is, is for dog mass. That is the majority. And it's a shame because the council does provide a lot of dog bags for mm. dog mass. So, and what we find is that people can sometimes get it in the bag, but can't get the bag in a bin. So we found the bags as well. So either of them, you would be, you could be instantly fined for that. I think it's a hundred pound fine. Yeah. Instant yeah. fine. So, and it's it's somebody it, we've now got like that full time, ab, based in Macclesfield only. So it's worth just reminding people of that. Fly tipping, business waste, litter, dog fouling, and abandoned vehicles. Plus. Um, you, the PSPO, you can, you know, the area where you're not allowed to drink and everything, you can enforce in that oh, area right. too. Public space. Yeah, public space mm -hmm. protection orders. Yeah. 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 So, oh, and he's coming to full council next week, so he will be there if councillors want to meet him and, and ask him any questions. Well, I'd hope he'd maybe just give us a brief report on his successes and, yes. and what he is, you know, what he is managing to do. If he can see, literally see the difference yeah. now that he's been visiting some of these places, I'm sure he will have. I'm sure he'll, he'll be able to to prove his worth to us. Mm. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's good. So, town centre regeneration. We've got the town centre recovery working group. Anything on the slide? Um, well, I wasn't at the last meeting. Um, I know Councillor Wilson and uh, the comms officer were, but one thing um, myself and Abby, the comms officer, did do was that the LEP offered um, a course through Manchester University on developing place leaders. It was like a three hour course, so we thought we'll all go along. And um, it was really pleasing that everything they said we had done or were doing it was like get a group together meet regularly focus on it do events to bring people into town just increase your footfall and so we felt quite um pleased with ourselves <laughs> that we you know and 
it wasn't like we've just done this. We did this two, two and a half years ago. So that was a really good takeaway that um, everything that, you know, the, the people who've done degrees and everything in this, that we, we've got it right. What we were doing was right. So that was, that was very pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything else is, you know, like we were saying before about the, the toilets have largely come from this, the plan for the toilets. Things like the shutter project, we may not, this sounds awful, we may not have known about a lot of these initiatives if we weren't having those regular meetings to just be like, oh, such and such is doing this, such and such is doing this. Yeah. And the, you know, if anybody who wants to go and see the shutters on Sunderland Street, they're looking, they're looking really good. And, and I know we've said this before, really Macclesfield. Yeah. So yeah, so the group, it, it's a brilliant group. And sometimes it feels things don't change and then big things come along. Oh, yeah. But we're there in the background, yeah. we're working away, and we know that the left actually do think well of us because we have been in touch right from the start and we were giving them our programme and the, uh, you know, telling them what we were doing and they were then passing that on to other groups. So we were, we were in a way teaching the left mm -hmm. to some extent, so uh, it's nice to have that prove that you know we are i think ahead of the game and we are doing a, a, a great job to help the people in the town um so you know just and one of the things in here which i don't know that it's in here but one of the main things i think is also the outdoor hospitality yeah. you know we've enlivened the town we've got the outdoor hospitality here at the top of the marketplace We've also got it down near the cenotaph. You know, we, we, I'm hoping that we will find other areas that we can extend it to. Um, and we were talking earlier about the festoons down there um, in, in, uh, in the area near the cenotaph, around there. And um, that, the difference that makes for that part of town to have those lights in the street and I think they're something which, you know, we should again be looking at where the, where the lights and trees can go because it really does lift the area and make, make people feel safe and also that it's a place they want to, they want to be and, and linger. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with the, the work of the Town Centre Recovery Group. I think it's doing a tremendous job. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I want to echo everything that you've said. And when you think, really, for quite a short time, the recovery work group's been in existence. Um, and you also think that it was born at this services committee because we had the discussion here first. Yeah. And uh, we brought forward the proposals to the um, full council and other councils and other organisations joined us. Mm -hmm. And when you review, as you just have done, and we have done earlier in this evening's meeting, what we have achieved. At the, what, what is the place indeed for Macclesfield and the clerk is telling us about um, the feedback that we are doing all the right things. You know, I think bearing in mind that we as a town have received no government funding whatsoever for regeneration projects. We have been bypassed. We've made, we've made very good bids. We've worked exceptionally hard with our colleagues on the working group to make very, very good bids. And admittedly, we've had welcome back funds, funds, welcome back funds, funds. Uh, and we've had, you know, deck chairs and really great things like that. But when you look at what we've achieved over just over a couple of years, with actually little or no government support which has gone to other towns, mm -hmm. I think we've done a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. I think we're, we're, we're right to be proud of that. And the, and the way was led by Macclesfield Town Council. Yeah, well said. We're all agreeing there. I think uh, we've got a lot to be proud of. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we do get that acknowledgement from the people in the town. Mm. We do see that, that they they recognise the work that the town council is doing mm. and, and support us. So that's that's good. Okay, thank you. So we move to uh, the football data. So thank you, Chair. Yeah. Um so recently we have sort of had a bit of a change around with our football data as people may be aware if they've watched these previous meetings so we've now agreed that 
exactly which figures we're going to be using and they will start to be um, updated on our website so that people can log on and just have a look at, at what they're showing but what we've decided to show here is how our events are affecting the football figures and I think it's it's quite clear to see that the last three events that we had not including the Lantern Parade because the report was written before that but the last three events we had significantly impacted the uh, football figures in town and showed an increase um, so that's drawing people into the town it's people who potentially will spend more money in the shops but also outside investors who are looking to bring their businesses to Macclesfield can look at those figures and say actually yeah Macclesfield is, is doing really well we've got some really good data here that shows you know these events are working and bringing people into town so that's really good and we're, we're feeling quite positive about that I think it's showing though that it's definitely worth us focusing on events mm. and you know then it brings people in and then they, they look around the shops or the cafes or whatever so um, I think that's the way for us to go uh, to encourage more people into the town. Um, the town centre Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. Yes, Chair, so the Wi-Fi connection figures, uh, Macclesfield Town, so, Town Council sorry, provide free Wi-Fi connections. So if you are in the town centre and you go to your Wi-Fi settings, you will see uh, Macclesfield free Wi-Fi and you can just connect to that. Um, the connection figures have sort of remained steady. There was a, an increase during December, which was quite good to see. Obviously, they run up to Christmas. January has seen a small dip, but then January is a typically slow month retail-wise, so there will be less people in the town centre overall, and therefore less people connecting. So it's we're not overly concerned about that. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we've got the town centre signage. Yes, Chair, thank you. Um, so we've had sort of three projects on the go and um, the first one is the notice boards for the indoor market so something that we've been working on quite closely is is trying to get some more um some marketing if you like for the indoor market we've had lots of comments that people don't necessarily know what's in there as you walk past you can only see the shops that sort of front the um, the entrances and um, so we have created a large scale map which you will see over here. <laughs> I would hold it up, but I have to film and, and do other bits and pieces. So two of those went up in the indoor market today. One in the lift, as the lifts discharge into the Grosvenor Centre, there's one on the wall there. There's one on the wall as you walk into the indoor market in that funny glass entranceway. And there will also be one going up in the rear entrance of the indoor market as well. So anybody accessing through the yellow room off Churchill Way can have a look at the map, see where everything is. Um, we've already had some feedback from the traders in the indoor market this afternoon and they're really pleased with it. We are going to add a little sort of red spot, you are here type thing for those who just need a bit of orientation. Uh, but we're really pleased with them. They are temporary, they're only printed on Corex um, because we are aware that there are a couple of new vendors coming into the indoor market. We want to be able to update them as and when. And obviously the toilets, once they're completed, then we'll hopefully get a more permanent version made that can be sort of updated in little elements. Um, the archway for the Castle Quarter, I think you said yourself, Chair, that um, chasing landlords for permission is a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> um, and sort of similar situation with regards to this. Um, obviously, now that the notice boards for the indoor market are finally finished, we'll be able to sort of refocus a little bit on that. Um, there's still a couple of landlords who are outstanding, and, and until we have those, we sort of can't really make any progress. So we'll just keep chipping away at that. And then the railway station, I've started having some conversations with Avanti um, in regards to having a specific town council notice board um, at the station. So we're just trying to work out the logistics behind that. Um, and then hopefully people who visit Macclesfield on the train from Manchester or from the other way um, will get to the station and be able to look at that notice board and find something to do when they arrive. Okay, thank you. Any comments? Yes, Councillor Livingston. Just good thanks for persistence with the indoor market. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you've got <laughs> you know, babies and young and, and, the, and the thing, but the toilet's going to be probably some further work than what you can do with them in terms of how they market them. Because the, the market, I think, is an opportunity to keep it sustainable, which is, because it's one of those things, you start losing things like this, it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. so important the um, indoor market is, is a project that we all want to be uh, want to be working on with Cheshire's and to to improve it and there's a lot of improvement can be made and I think it's a bit like what we've done with the town centre mm -hmm. I think there's a lot can be done with just a small amount of effort and, and a small amount of funding actually I think we could make some significant changes to the indoor market. And this is just one of the steps here with this sign. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to say thank you, Abby, for all the work you do with the different, um, the different communications around town and the station and the castle quarter. Um, it's, uh, it's much appreciated and I know it can be difficult at times. Um, trying to get the answers that you need and trying to get get hold of the people that you need but um, it's appreciated and we'll get there so thank you next item is community transport working group um, and the group met um, just recently um, and so we, I can update this um, this report here. Um, I mean, what I will what I will say is that initially we were set up to think. You know, we, the the idea was we would get a community bus going round the town, circulating round the estate and coming back down into the town via the medical centre and, and various other points. And um, we've sought advice. We've had people come um, to the group um, and, um, and for instance we've, you know, we had Simon Finney from uh, ECT who runs community transport on Cheshire West and Chester and has years of experience in commercial bus transport and he really sort of put us right on it <laughs> that our, our budget of £100,000 wouldn't touch the service, it really wouldn't do anything. So we had to re we had to reassess what we can do. And so um, we, we finally came down to um, supporting where we can with the Cheshire East bus initiatives, uh, supporting the, uh, uh, the two pound for a bus, bus ticket, you know, that scheme that's happening at the minute, um, that we promote that. And um, the one main thing is that we decided, well, what we would do is promote a free bus day. Like we have free parking, or Cheshire East have a free parking day, we thought we would do a free bus day and see how much that would cost and link it with an event. So uh, we possibly thought the Christmas, at Christmas, the Christmas Day event that we would have um, the, um, oh, not, it's not the Christmas light up day no. as such, but it's the, Christ, it's the day of the, you know, here we are coming into Christmas, end of November. And we would, and we would maybe have that as a free bus day. People would be encouraged to use the bus to come into town. They, the proof would be they'd have a, a ticket or some other, you know, item, and and then they could use that at the event to maybe buy to to exchange it for a complimentary drink or something like that. So they get so so they'd be encouraged to use the bus and they would get something for for doing that. Um, and we're saying the Christmas day because um, we don't know how long this is going to take. Mm. If we can do it sooner, 
we might be able to say link it in with say spooky saturday or something mm. like that um, but we're thinking of more an autumn or winter time where people might be more inclined to come in on the bus than either walking or driving so that's that's um one of the ideas that we're definitely going to pursue and another idea is um to promote to promote the use of electric bikes and um, possibly um, we would be looking to um, speak to Russ with the e-love bikes and give him a small project to actually do a bit of a feasibility study on it for us for uh, maybe you know not maybe half a dozen bikes we, we're not we're not sure exactly but we'll let him see with a feasibility. Um, I mean, this is something which we've just come up with at our latest meeting. So it doesn't really appear on our previous minutes. Uh, but this is something which we quite like the idea of um, to see how we would encourage people using electric bikes. Um, but again, we have to look at cost and for that. Yes. So um, it was lovely to be able to discuss the electric bike idea and um, David Edwards, the Councillor Edwards isn't here this evening but as maybe people may know because they'll have seen him around Macclesfield, he has purchased himself an electric bike and he is a big proponent of electric bikes and one of the things that we were talking about is that it is, it is a big investment, I think you have to look at the cost of an electric bike in comparison to maybe a car rather than thinking of it as a comparison to a uh, a bike because it's a very it's a sort of different ballpark so the idea was that it's a big investment but people if they're given the option to try um, an electric bike for a length of time maybe two weeks maybe a month but we'll let obviously whoever does the feasibility study because it might not um, we've suggested Russ that he might not want to do that feasibility study but somebody to do a feasibility study uh, that people would be able to try them out because if they don't fit with their lifestyle or the places that they go to it doesn't work for them or it's too heavy or there's lots of you know difficulties with electric bikes I'm not saying they're, they're absolutely for everybody but it would be able people could try them um, so it wasn't like the Manchester scheme the barrel bikes <laughs> which is you know where you tap in I don't know if anyone's used them in Manchester they're very very efficient you basically download an app tap in so that's not what we're thinking we're not thinking of having them all over, it's more that people take them for a length of time to see whether it works with their particular journeys basically and how are they felt on a bike and things like that. So before people think that it's that sort of tap in, borrow it just for a few, you know, five or ten minutes or whatever, a small journey, it's not, it's not that sort of scheme. So that this was a, an idea we were just considering at the last meeting, but we, we felt that it was probably a reasonable one to consider and at least get a feasibility study about. Yeah. But it's really just to try and encourage people to be more active. And for those people who don't feel they could you know, cycle on an ordinary bike, that a, an electric might, bike might be the option for them. And I particularly like the idea of a three-wheeler actually <laughs> because I know I think Ailey was trying one out at one time I remember seeing a photograph of her trying one yes um, the other thing we did talk about as well we were going to promote was the flexi link mm -hmm. because um, it came up quite a few well at least two conversations uh, when we were in the treacle market this Sunday and people weren't really aware that it was still running they weren't mm -hmm. aware how to use it so I had two good conversations with people who thought that they might consider using that um, so again that's got its pros and cons but it's it's helping people to realize that it's there so I thought you know I think that's the thing that we want to yeah. promote isn't it we want to make use of the things that are already there because uh, I think there was some evidence that that's underused at the moment so, anyway. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The FlexiLink is, is, is running quite, um, I think people have to pay three pounds a journey. Yeah, 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 three pounds a journey, or yeah. free if you have a concessionary bus pass. Yeah. Free booked, etc. etc. I mean, so yes, it's got pros and cons, yeah. but it's worth promoting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it.
So that's why there's nothing wrong with you being able to drive yourself. No, um, just that I'm feeling trying to find out um, if you could have a free bus there. Yes. Oh, yes, sorry. Yeah, that's got some specific passengers before that free chair. I've noticed um, on the Mosser stage around Mosser Pad where the number nine buses actually part of the bus cats, they are much fuller than they have been for ages. I've been remarking to um, to, 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 to people locally that there appears to be a lot more local people using the bus now, the bus cats in, which I think is quite encouraging. Yeah, yeah that's good. So it's, people are obviously taking it yeah, up they and they're realising and, yeah. and taking advantage of it. That's good. Yes, Councillor Yeah, <coughs> I mean, I think it's really um, great that you're thinking about all these different ideas. It'd be really good if you could think of um, like a family ticket for buses. I love the idea of the events bus mm. because that, that does work. I've been in other, other cities, not necessarily towns, where that's worked really well for an event. Um, but also, uh, the residents in Hertel have said to me it's quite expensive to get the bus for a family if you've got two adults, two children, mm. even a two pound flat rate, it, mm. it works as cheap to get a taxi. Mm. So it's, it's thinking about that or you could have. I don't know, it could be even mini buses, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know, but I think tying in with an event is an excellent idea and promoting services that are already there with Flexily, I do know people who use it, so that, that's quite useful as well to really promote something. Thank you. Item 10, Council Identity and Communications. Thank you, Chair. Um, so just before I talk about the general comms and website update, um, it's just to let you all know that following the Lantern Parade, we have introduced a, an event feedback form. Um, it's currently available on our website and um, on the What's On, you can get to it from the What's On page. So if you're looking for an event, you can then go and, and give some feedback on the event you've attended. Um, so we've put that feedback form up there following the Lantern Parade and um, we've had um, a number of responses that have all been incredibly positive and it was really nice to read and I think you yourself mentioned earlier Chair about the museum commenting on, on people going to them that maybe haven't been there before. One of the questions we've asked on that feedback form is have you ever been to uh, the Silk Museum and have you ever been to Christchurch? Um, and if not, would you consider going back? And, and most people have said yes, they've either been before or if they haven't, then they do want to go and explore by themselves in their own time. So I think the fact that that's sort of coming out in the feedback is just really positive. And um, we've had comments from people on what they liked best. And I think the lobster is coming out top at the moment. Um, <laughs> why not? Um, and also we've asked, you know, what, what would they, like to see us do slightly differently to improve the event so we've got some things that we can work on and take into consideration for future but so far that's as i say it's proven really positive and it's invaluable for us to find out what people around the town are thinking so yeah something that we've started doing and um, just in terms of sort of followers on social media apologies but that should say the last full month of january 2023 not october 22 um, we've had a 7% increase across all of our social media platforms, which is sort of very steady for us. Um, nothing magical there. Um, I've then just given an overview of the last 28 days um, from the, up to the 13th of February. And you can see that our posts, um, all of the posts that we did in the last 28 days um, reached a total of 42,500 people and around 40, just under 14 and a half people actually engaged in some way, whether that was liking it, commenting it, watching the video. Um, and we had 63 new page followers just in that one month. So I think, you know, obviously people really appreciate our social media and, and follow us to find out what's going on in town. So Chinese New Year post uh, got a lot of um, a lot of likes um, the Western Wombles post which is Councillor Hutchison doing his litter pick on the Western um, he's termed it Western Wombles and that was really well received um, and again reach Chinese New Year the Mayor's Civic Awards and also the Town Council staff team going to Congleton on the bus <laughs> taking advantage of the £2 bus fare everyone seemed to like that one as well um, the Mayor's page herself um, continues to increase its followers it's now got 
570, which is a 5% increase from November's figures. So that's really good. Um, and then aside from our social media and online presence, we're doing a lot more um, sort of printed material and using other marketing methods. Um, so just this morning, our town clerk was on Silk FM talking about the, um, the need for ID if you wish to vote in person at local elections, the toilets and our events. Um, the, we did a winter map update, which was 20 pages, including a double page spread um, on Christmas and a two page welcome from the mayor. Um, we've, I think we've distributed about 500 copies of that. We had um, Christmas events in the Mac Express, We've been on Silk FM every month since November now. Um, press releases in all the local press. We've done, um, Councillor Wilson um, was on BBC Northwest today and tonight talking about Chestergate. Um, we've had um, Christmas messages from uh, Councillor Thompson and Councillor Wilcock. We've had all sorts of things. Oh, and the last sort of thing that we've done recently was the mayor giving away Daffodils, a random act of kindness day. <laughs> so just things like that to get to let people know what we're doing, to let them know that we're here. Um, and obviously we've got all our Easter posters which will be going out tomorrow. So people will be able to walk around town. We've got a lot of shops putting them up. We've got the post office putting them up now. So more places for people to see our posters and to find out what we are doing. team and, and, and Abby for increasing the non-social media um, communication stuff because we've discussed this a number of times haven't we I think social media is doing really really well but we have now we've, we've done a lot more paper stuff and that's getting around as well but a poster for everything we do is great because you can put it all in all the locations around your ward and uh, the charge just holding up the leaflet that we had on Saturday at the Treeful Market and it's, it's so simple two sides of A5, and it was really, really useful. I mean, so I wonder whether a flyer like that is, is, is the thing for the future as well, because the Mac updates a lot of work, and its reach is good, but um, we could all hand those out and give those out in our own boards and all the places that we put our materials. And <clears throat> I do think we are, we are doing well both in social media and in our paper communications, which is something that we've had comments, well, we didn't know what was happening, you know, and, and obviously social media isn't for everybody, but I really do think we are getting out and about now with paper stuff as well, which is really good. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, we, we have been. I think it's been something which a number of us have always uh, been you know, em reinforcing, really, that um, there's so much social media, which is great for mm. people who work that way and like to follow it but for a certain age group and I reckon I'm probably one of them you know we tend to be more uh, we like a piece of paper mm -hmm. rather than looking on a, a computer screen or a, or on a, on a phone mm -hmm. so yeah it's good but we're catering for all for all and uh, so no one's then being left out that's good Right, well, thank you everybody. It's been a productive evening. And uh, just, just remains to say that uh, the next meeting of the Services Committee will be held um, on April the 17th at 7pm. I'm assuming at this venue. No. Or, oh no, of course not. We've got, um, we've got such a thing as an election going on. It will be, be in the library. So it will be right. So library, it will actually, be in the yeah. library. Okay, it will be in the library.